Because Uncle Howdy has not yet destroyed my studio and because we all have feelings, I'm here <coughs> to answer the call. Welcome to a Not Sam Wrestling emergency podcast because Jacob Fatu is here and he is part of the bloodline. I can't believe it. We knew it was coming. We knew that, well, we didn't know it was coming, but we thought it would be coming. We thought it was around the corner every single time. Bloodline news was breaking, and then you hear all this stuff, right? When the Tongans showed up after WrestleMania, when after WrestleMania, Tama Tonga showed up on SmackDown and uh, surprised people because the rumors had already existed that Jacob Fatu was on his way. But when it was Tama Tonga that showed up on SmackDown, that's when things went wonky. That's when things went awry and all the rumors and what was actually happening and what was actually executed on all got mixed up. If you were listening, if you, if you just read the internet, then Hikaleo, the brother of Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, was supposed to debut like last week and this week, some dude named Caesar is coming out and what happens? Cody Rhodes shows up and he's got his Homelander jacket on and he's ready for a match with Solo Sokoa. And he says he's coming alone, and this is reminiscent of the Roman Reigns-Cody Rhodes confrontation before WrestleMania when Roman Reigns said that Cody was an idiot. And then Cody's help arrived through the crowd when he realized that Roman Reigns' help was there the whole time. Well, the same thing happened. Solo Sokoa, who, by the way, earlier in the evening had broken the news to Paul Heyman. We'll talk about all this on Monday. This is an emergency podcast. This is a podcast where we're here for our feelings, okay? We'll talk about Drew McIntyre. We'll talk about CM Punk. We'll talk about the Paul Heyman uh, uh, segment with him. We'll talk about all of that on Monday. But right now, we've got feelings. Solo Sokoa tells Paul Heyman, Roman Reigns ain't coming back. Oh, the emotions. Again, we'll talk about it on Monday. Because just as we're getting over the fact that Solo Sokoa is now claiming that Roman Reigns isn't coming back, okay? And 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 Paul Heyman has no way to communicate with Roman Reigns. This is like one of those cult documentaries that you see on Netflix, the mind control that's going on. And this is not new territory for the bloodline. We've seen it from the beginning of this faction. The mental warfare that the tribal chief whoever it may be at the time strikes upon those that follow him. Well, now, instead of Jey Uso being the victim of that to Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman has become the victim of that to Tribal Chief Solo Sokoa. Again, not a relationship or a direction that I think most of us saw this going in. And of course, the Tongans, the right-hand man, Tama Tonga, and the infamous Tonga Loa both come out ready to beat down Cody Rhodes right after Corey Graves had told us that the Fox affiliates were going to allow SmackDown as much time as they needed to finish this match. They didn't need that much time at all. But guess what? Randy Orton and Kevin Owens had their eye on the match. They come out. Apparently, they weren't taken out well enough because they come out. They clear out the ring. Solo Sokoa starts laughing, and that's the moment where you didn't need the numbers because the great equalizer had arrived, and that great equalizer is, is a man who moves with the strength and speed, the likes of which we rarely see, especially when coupled with that man's frame. That man, of course, is Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu, the first Samoan to be added to the bloodline since Solo Sokoa, right? The bloodline faction, anyway. Jacob Fatu, a blood member, of that Samoan dynasty, whereas uh, Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga, both sons of Haku, who is an uncle in the sense that he's a very, very close family friend, and a tag team partner to a member of the Fatu family. That's Sam Fatu. Sam Fatu wrestled as the Tonga kid. He was not Tongan, Samoan, part of the Fatu family, but Sam Fatu, brother of Rikishi, teamed with Haku. Haku's children, the people we see in the bloodline right now, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa. His partner, Sam Fatu's children, include Jacob Fatu. 
So what we're seeing here is a bloodline that consists of the offspring of the original tag team, the Islanders, the Tonga Kid and Haku. Jacob Fatu, cousin, legit cousin of Solo Sokoa and the Usos, as uh, Solo's father is Rikishi. Solo's brother, Sam Fatu, is the father of Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu has been wrestling for a few years now. We've seen him pop up uh, in Impact. Uh, we saw him make uh, certainly the biggest mark in his career in Major League Wrestling, where he held the world title. Known as the Samoan Werewolf, this is a guy who has developed such a reputation for himself. I mean, not just one of my favorite active wrestlers uh, in the Samoan dynasty, one of my favorite active wrestlers, period. Now, one of those guys that you look at going, I wish WWE could get their hands on him. Well, now their hands are all over him. As the Even at the Bloodline's peak, the, it, Jacob Fatu was a name that you heard brought up. Jacob Fatu was a name that people said, well, why don't they try to get Jacob? Imagine if Jacob Fatu joined them. Jacob Fatu was that name. And right around WrestleMania time, the rumors started uh, rumbling that Jacob Fatu had signed with WWE. But just when we think we're going to get Jacob Fatu on the SmackDown after WrestleMania, here comes Tama Tonga. Just when we think we're going to get Jacob Fatu, here comes Tonga Loa. And I think that people had all heard rumors about the third Haku kid, the brother of Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, Hikaleo, who's been wrestling in New Japan, coming in. And just as people are married to those rumors, the way they were married to the Jacob Fatu rumors when Tama Tonga came in, that is when Jacob Fatu finally comes in and what a mark he makes. First of all, he hasn't been uh, wrestling since right before WrestleMania. That's the last time anybody saw him wrestle, I think, on the Indies. That's the last time at least I am aware of him wrestling anywhere, you know, uh, uh, MLW, the Independents, wherever. He appears to have gotten himself in, in the best shape of his life. He, he looked like he was in incredible shape. He goes in, he's spearing people, he's using all of his power. You knew instantly that this was somebody special. And then he hits that big splash, and that's a tough thing on your first night to put the WWE undisputed champion on a table, get up on the top rope from the ring, make the leap, and hit it perfectly. Jacob Fatu had all the weight of the world on his shoulders. Clearly, he's responsible for bringing this bloodline it back into the main event scene, okay? As we're headed, finally headed towards that Solo Sokoa, Cody Rhodes thing, what is gonna make us feel like the bloodline is that main event level threat? Jacob Fatu is the answer. At the same time, this is not just any week. SmackDown was a banger as it was which again, we'll talk about on Monday. It's also coming five days removed from one of the most memorable endings in the history of Monday Night Raw. This is the world that Jacob Fatu is walking into. Now, clearly, a few weeks back, Solo Sokoa said, we already have Cody in check, and he doesn't even know it yet. And Paul Heyman, with innocence and naivete, Ask Solo Sokoa, who's we? On SmackDown, we got our answer. Clearly that we is Jacob Fatu, as Jacob Fatu is here to bring the Bloodline 2.0 into the next chapter of whatever it is. And he really is, truly is a difference maker. I would recommend you guys spend some time going on YouTube and going back and looking at what this guy is capable of. Out of everybody who is in the bloodline or who has been in the bloodline. Um, I think that Jacob Fatu, in the way he wrestles, I think that, that, that Jacob Fatu feels like he shares, he's the next evolution that Umaga was to Yokozuna. Yokozuna was an extremely special athlete, an incredible professional wrestler, the likes of which I think to this day, 
people still don't appreciate Yokozuna 92 to 94, November 92 to November 94. Those two years of Yokozuna in the WWE. Watch those two years. Watch the way this guy moves. It does it defies the laws of physics. To me, and it's almost like clockwork. The next evolution comes about, what, 10, 15 years later. And it's Umaga. You know, we saw the signs of it when he wrestled as Jamal. Uh, 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 yeah, Jamal with Rosie and Jamal. But really, Umaga, to me, was that next evolution of Yokozuna. And if that chain continues... I see 15 plus years removed. To me, Jacob Fatu, without, again, putting too much pressure on this guy, follows that chain of athletes. Follow that, that, that to me is the reverence with which I think of Jacob Fatu. That is the excitement. It, it's, it's where the excitement lies that I have for Jacob Fatu entering into the WWE and being a part of this thing. And I think, you know, the idea of, well, where does he fit in? Clearly the idea of a power struggle can be there. I think for right now, the idea of Solo Sokoa being this boss, this tribal chief character, this guy who doesn't have to wrestle, this guy who wears the red T-shirt and the blazer, and Jacob Fatu being the guy who takes care of business while the Tongans are there, almost as foot soldiers, feels like the way this all works out. You know, I mean, storyline-wise, of course. The idea of Solo Sokoa versus Cody Rhodes, yeah. But you're going to end up with a Jacob Fatu versus Cody Rhodes scenario. And if this is played right, I think what you've got is the inevitability of Roman Reigns returning to try to get that power back from Solo Sokoa, to try to stop Solo Sokoa's absolute reign of terror that he's been on. But in order to stop Solo Sokoa, what we're going to need to do is see that face-off of Jacob Fatu and Roman Reigns. I asked the question on Not Sam Wrestling, how do you get the bloodline heightened to a level where they become a credible threat to not only Cody Rhodes' WWE Universal Championship, but to the point where they become a credible threat to Roman Reigns, <clears throat> where Roman Reigns returns and he doesn't know if he's going to be able to get power back. He's not going to be able to just go in and steamroll through people. Jacob Fatu is the missing puzzle piece. If you've watched... Tama Tonga thus far. I think uh, Tama Tonga, I don't think people have given enough credit to how good in the ring Tama Tonga has been and the, the portrayal of what a threat that that can be. But in terms of the whole package, by the way, Jacob Fatu can promo too. Did I tell you that? Jacob Fatu can handle a microphone as well. Everything that we saw on SmackDown, he can do that long-term. And oh yeah, he can promo his ass off and make you believe that you better not find him outside the arena after the show because he will mess you up too. That's what we're dealing with, with Jacob Fatu. And the idea that 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 we can we can build to a, a Cody and Jacob, we can build to a Roman and Jacob, we can build to Solo versus Jacob, Solo and Jacob together. There's so much going on in the bloodline. 2.0 is now formed into that uh, uh, four person faction. And by the way, if you watch at the end, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa both look confused. Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa both look like they are now in the Paul Heyman category of people who maybe have not been consulted about this. It doesn't seem that Solo Sokoa filled the Tongans in on what his plan was. 
Solo Sokoa is not a leader that handles things with kid gloves. But now he's got Jacob Fatu. I think Jacob Fatu adds an element of excitement to this whole thing, adds a huge uh, question mark into not only what he's capable of, but what this new bloodline is capable of, and adds a layer of credibility to this new bloodline that I think, to be frank, this new bloodline was lacking until tonight. I am so optimistic. I'm so excited. What an episode of SmackDown. What an ending. We I, I have already started the outline for Monday's full episode of Not Sam Wrestling. I think it's 505, maybe. I don't know. It's going to be an amazing episode. We have so much to talk about. WWE is walking into the summer, and they are walking into the summer hard. I cannot wait to see what happens next. And that's exactly how you want to feel when you watch a professional wrestling program. Thank you for being here as we get our feelings out together. We'll talk again on Monday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. If you're listening on audio, subscribe there, there as well. Leave a review, leave a rating, and we'll talk on Monday. Thanks, everybody.